greetings, and good evening, friends, family, and anyone else who may be watching this important message I have to share. Before I begin, I'd like to express that sharing with you all this hidden secret of mine is perhaps not an easy pill to swallow for many, naturally. However, as difficult as it may be for me to delicately deliver, it is an essential statement provoked by a heartfelt wish of mine that cannot be properly explained before first opening up and relinquishing my truth in its entirety. I will do my best here today to deliver this truth with the utmost sincerity and compassionate consideration. As this involves a topic of which, thanks to my spirituality and everlasting faith, I have grown to accept and find deep peace and serenity with during my journey in what we simply call life. As some of you who are close to my heart already know to an extent of little or great lengths, I live with the immune compromising disease known as HIV and have lived with it and endured its unforgiving, sporadic, and for the most part, unannounced hostile behavior for almost nine years. I was 16 years old and greatly naive and uneducated in the dangers of sexual conduct and what they may bring. I was taken advantage of by a man who was 10 years older than I, who failed to share with me his positive status of which he was fully aware of, not to mention failing to provide me an opportunity to give proper consent. It was a whole year later before I was diagnosed with the disease, at which time I was heavily involved with my first boyfriend. It was a soul-shattering moment in time, not just for me, but for everyone around me that took many long years and extensive therapy to work through and evolve from. Over the course of those nine years, I have experimented and experienced at separate times in my life through the guided hands of respected and compassionate nurses and doctors three different medications that are prescribed to ensure the virus stays suppressed and that I may be guaranteed a long, relatively healthy life. The side effects each time I was actively taking these medications were proving to be more cumbersome and stressful for me and my livelihood rather than rejuvenating and reassuring for mind and soul. The last time I went through with taking these medications was solely at the mercy of those around me who insisted I attempt to endure the preventatives once more. I did this regardless of how I knew I would feel because I didn't want to unintentionally hurt others, but quickly after taking them for a few months knew I had made a mistake and went against my strong instincts and guided spiritual faith. I knew I had to do what felt right within me and had to walk an honest path that was true to my soul, regardless of what others may have lovingly and sincerely wished for my life and its journey. Now that I have briefly disclosed the journey I've carefully and consciously walked, this brings me to the true purpose of my difficult announcement today and my deepest wish to ensure our love lasts forever and evermore. As a devout worshiper of my diverse spiritual omniest and heavily Wiccan based faith and those I love who watch over it dedicatingly from the infinite world beyond this physical realm, I have over the years, developed, consciously visited, and revisited, understood with deep,
guidance from spirit that I am one who looks at life and desires quality over quantity. Life is a cherished gift, a privilege we are blessed to have received from the moment we rise from slumber to the moment we rest our heads and quietly reflect on our day's events. Ever since I was a young child, I was always referred to as an old soul, a term that through my chaotic teenage years and enlightening adulthood grew to understand on a much deeper and detailed spiritual level, a soul that has lived many, many long lives before and has become the embodiment of past memories, experiences, interests, and a close, united, magical, and unique bond with many aspects of the old world. I believe each soul comes full circle. All lives within must experience any and all that the physical realm has to offer and learn from. Love and hatred, joy and sorrow, groundbreaking success and ultimate failure, challenges and privileges before it's ready to return home, a sacred, breathtaking, infinite world beyond this physical realm. I believe that this life of mine was never meant to prolong the average timeline the general society of the world habitually expects one to live. For me, this is neither sad nor depressing, for I do not believe in death the way most do. We are all just energy. Without it, our vessels we groom each day check in the mirror before leaving for work and have monitored by medical professionals would be completely inanimate and lifeless. The end. E-N-D. Break it down as an abbreviation and you'll see that energy never dies. It is more of a transition from one realm of living to the next realm of living. We mourn the loss because we do not know how to live without people we love most. But we also have a choice to celebrate the life they did have, no matter long or short, the lessons and growth they persevered through, the successes they had, the legacy they leave behind. Fearing death and the unknown only creates blockages to one's growth and progression, their happiness and ability to grow stronger, even though my physical and mental psychological health continues to deteriorate, my ironclad spiritual health and unwavering optimism reminds me to appreciate, love, and cherish everything and every one life has offered me. To me, the most important of them all, for as long as I have my faith, compassion, and my determination, I have nothing to fear and everything to have gratitude for. As the next few months, and perhaps if I'm destined and lucky to be gifted years ahead of me in this journey, are highly uncertain and I start to fall into the medical parameters of dangerous and vulnerable territory, I have been closely listening diligently to my spiritual deities along with my deep intuition, my gut feeling as one would call it, to find myself feeling the sense of urgency to make all necessary preparations and plans required to bring a full dignified and uniquely specific close to this chapter of my life and soul. Leaving no details or wishes for the closure of this chapter ignored or forgotten before I no longer possess the mental capacity to remember and document all of which I feel is important for my soul's transition from one realm to the next. 
while still enrapturing and leaving behind varieties of my energy. This brings me to the topic of my deepest wish that I touched on in the beginning of this announcement, a wish that would have left one confused if I hadn't disclosed my health and its history in its entirety. Also, to provide ample time to all those watching this video today. I request of all who wish to participate and stay connected with me soul to soul, regardless of your faith or religion, acquire yourself two crystals. Crystals that represent our relationship and the love we share, or that simply remind you of me. This could be amethyst, obsidian, moonstone, tiger's eye, any crystal or stone that harnesses the ability to absorb and capture energy within. Keep these crystals nearby. Hold them when your heart is heavy or you're lost in reminiscent thoughts of us. The night before the ceremony of my internment back to Mother Earth's warm embrace, the final goodbye with my physical vessel. Sleep with these crystals, either on your bedside table or perhaps even under your warm blanket next to your heart. You may decide to place them under your pillow in a velvet pouch. However you place them, keep them near. An active element of all guests' participation will take place during the final ceremony, where each guest will stand, close their eyes, and focus all their thoughts, energy, and emotions into each crystal held tightly in each hand. When a moment of silence passes, each row of guests will be invited to approach closely where I lay in state. One by one, with no time limit, here, I encourage each and everyone to quietly whisper into one of the two crystals or stones one last message to leave me with. Seal it with a kiss and place the crystal or stone anywhere you desire within the coffin's edges where I lay. The crystal you keep will act as an extension to the one buried with me forever so that we shall never ever truly be apart and our love will live on in eternity. I pray hope by doing this one will feel a sense of closure, a sense of peace, serenity and assurance that we one day will meet again but we'll always have a physical piece of each other's love until that glorious day comes for us all where we are united in spirit with a warm, compassionate embrace. We may have limited time here together in the physical realm to create new memories, reflect on old, and share our love for each other, to celebrate, laugh, and come together but an infinite amount of time in the great beyond. Let's spend the limited time we all have loving, caring, and appreciating one another for who we are in unity and defying all that stands in our way in the name of love. I ask for forgiveness from all of whom I've done wrong or hurt throughout my life. As well, I provide forgiveness to all those who may have done me wrong or have hurt me during my enlightening time here on earth. Life is too short and the heart too fragile and pure to carry resentment, anger, and seasoned negativity. Live and let live. Trust the process and remember to always count your blessings when the moment permits. 
We are all astoundingly lucky to live and breathe this day, and hopefully the next. Please have patience with me and the sudden, unpredictable changes that are continually surprising me with good days and bad days each day. I may not be able to remember things as clearly as I once did, keep the pace in a deep conversation, or even move as fast as days gone past. But my heart and its deep, open communication will never cease to exist. This I know. I love you all from the bottom of my heart and look forward to all the exciting memories and heartfelt moments we still have yet to share. Never forget who you are, what you truly believe, and the goals and dreams of your heart's true desires. Any and all is possible, and you are positively worth it. Poetry has always been a relieving source for me to utilize in some of my weakest and strongest moments. In saying that, I'd like to close this announcement with a poem I selected from my private diary, one of which I wrote in reflection to my life and my soul's purpose entitled Life of an Old Soul. Living the life of an old soul, you see, there was never a reoccurring childhood remedy, nothing that could heal or mend the fragile heart when all he wants and desires in life is many years apart. Backwards in time in other lives once lived, he spends each day attempting to relive. Each night bows his head quietly and forgives. But he does not resent nor detest his fate this is a gift realized as harsh as it is great, an acquired taste, a rare displace, and feeling quite misplaced. Yet full of life, wonder, and curiosity, so much love to give, and full of philosophy, he could live in a box for all he cares, withstand the judgment and constant stares. Because deep in his soul, he knows this is a divine test, one not to take lightly, not even in jest. A symbol of past, keeper of yesterday, a living reminder of reminiscent better days. This may look new to you, but do not be fooled. Deep in this soul, a long life is knowingly overruled. He's been privileged and blessed with years long before. Grateful to be here, but yearning to reach shore. Death is not an ending, nor does it exist. I assure you, this old soul will constantly loom in the mist, observing and learning, experiencing each moment. He may seem oh so quiet, detached, full of sorrow. It's only because he's short of tomorrows, harboring guilt for the anticipation of the day he is free balanced with the gratitude he has to spend the day with you and me. Now you see, as I say, it's the greatest blessing, the strongest curse. To be an old soul, the delicate life you must nurse. Do not cry, do not fear, he's not gone forever. He's right next to you through every endeavor. As much as he's lived, remember he's equally passed on. He's done this before and will return, respond. That is, when it's your time to relinquish from your physical form, he will be there, holding the door, to perform, to inform, guide you hand in hand through the transitional storm. Some say you only live once. This much ain't true. You'll live many times until the old soul becomes you too. Now I will pray. Thank you all deities, guides, and guardian angels 
for watching over and guiding me through this journey, providing me the strength to carry out this message and release with full transparency and without fear my truth to the world and those I love most dearly, now no longer heavy on my heart, nor hiding in the shadows, I truly live freely, openly, and for all to see for as long as you grant me. No embarrassment nor shame, no guilt or fear, I walk the rest of my journey with my head held high and my consciousness at ease always ready and willing to take on what's next without hesitation. I stand strong from the help, guidance, and love of you all, above and all around, with the blowing of the crisp fall breeze and the passing of a fluttering butterfly, and the loved ones still here with me in the physical realm, supporting, encouraging, and loving me each and every day. Blessed be, so mote it be. Aphrodite, Lucina, Apollo, Fortuna, Calypso, Zalthar, Gramps, and Tiff. Namaste and Amen. I personally want to thank and express my deepest compassion, love, gratitude, and appreciation to my daddy -o and my Tammy. You too have been what the late Queen Elizabeth would call my strength and stay throughout this battle and my life, my rocks, pillars of strength each step of the way. Without you too, without your inspiration, guidance, motivation, and never ending unconditional love. I would not be where I am today in every aspect of its meaning. You two have shown and demonstrated to me what parents and true love means, a lesson I am so blessed to finally understand and recognize after a short lifetime of various traumas, challenges, to my loyal Travi J Space viewers and YouTube family, I thank you and appreciate you more than you'll ever know. I have made so many friends across the globe through the mutual love and admiration for all things Nancy Drew, The Sims, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Space Colony and many other classic and adored PC games. I am eternally grateful. We still have lots of fun to share together. The best is yet to come. And last, but certainly not least, to my beloved and dearest Southar, my spiritual old soul lover, whose loyalty and hundreds of years and multiple lifespans of compassionate love you dedicatingly and patiently waited for until the sands of time ran out. I love you with my entire heart and soul. We made a promise hundreds of moons ago in a past life, and I haven't for a single second questioned its authenticity or re-examined the passions within it not once. My sweet darling, your long wait is not in vain. We will hold each other close again, and I'll be with you in apple blossom time. May the powers that be watch over us all forevermore. Thank you for your understanding and never-ending support through all my personal and business endeavors throughout the years. I hope the legacy of my life's work at Travi J Space brings comfort and joy to you all forever and ever. Toodles for now. 
Tata.